welcome to Pathfinders. As you can tell, it's all going to be about bees because this Saturday is World Bee Day. So that's one reason why I wanted to talk about bees with you this week. The other reason is it's because we're doing all about metamorphosis, aren't we, this term? So there's lots of things that can we can learn from bees and about metamorphosis, about change, all those good stuff. Hope you like my costume. It took me ages to make, but if you would like to make a bee costume and add that as your show and tell, then I would love to see that. I get inspired by you, and I know a lot of you have been dressing up as different animals over the weeks that we've been doing them, so I decided to do that myself. Well, anyway, let's get to the comments, see who's here. Jack's here, Grace and Rose are here, Corey is here. There's some buzzing bees in the comments as well wonderful so i've got a question for you as we're just getting in have you found any exciting nature treasures this week because let me tell you it was like the gods were shining upon pathfinders because i came upstairs to my desk where i do pathfinders from and i mean it's not good for the bee but it was good for this there was a dead bee oh i just dropped it a dead bee on the desk that I got to explore with my kids this morning. So you can even see its little stinger. Something my son found recently was an antler from a deer that was on the floor. So that was really exciting. I wonder if you found any good nature treasures recently. Oh, some people say, oh, four leaf, four leaf clover. What? That is amazing. Four leaf clover, well done. Hi, Lanier or Lanai, Lanier, Lanai. Tell me if I've got it wrong. Isabel, hi from you. Hi, Myla, hi, Jaden anyone else found anything exciting this week a smooth newt in the garden i have never i think i might have seen a newt one time when i was a kid but for some reason i haven't seen them um someone's seen lots of deers and rabbits amazing lovely hi matthew and those of you that are watching on catch well hello a zero leaf clover is that is that bad luck or is that extra extra lucky i don't know we found some giant clovers this week that were like this big yeah didn't find anything that's okay maybe next time you'll find some stuff so if you ever find anything that is just really exciting then definitely email me or get your grown-up to email me at this email address because i love to find out about it i love to live through your nature collections as well and get excited about it so definitely let me know if you can hear a noise i think there's a helicopter right above my head or maybe a giant bee who knows who knows Right now, let me just make sure I've got the things off. I don't want that email address up this whole time. There we go. Right, so normally I have a friend come and tell you a story, don't I? This week is just going to be me because I need to make this costume worth something. So I'm going to tell you a story. Has anyone ever heard of Aesop's Fables? You can just share, yes, or tell a person next to you if you have. Aesop wrote stories like the tortoise and the hare. He wrote a story about a bee. So I thought I would read that to you this morning. And just remember as well, you listen however you want to Pathfinders. If you want to stand on your head whilst you're doing this, do it. If your grown-up wants to go and get a cup of tea, let them do it. Just chill out, relax, and enjoy this story all about a queen bee. Are you ready? Let's get started. So, oh yes, some people have been reading this. Oh, Cinnabar, sorry. I'm looking in on the comments and getting distracted. Someone's seen a Cinnabar moth. I love Cinnabar moths. And yeah, a few people have been reading Aesop's Fables, but I've never heard of this one, so I wonder if any of you have. Anyway, let's get started. Once upon a time, in the beautiful region of Mount Hymatus, or Hymatus, there was a busy hive of bees. Their queen was known for her delicious honey and wise leadership. She ruled over her buzzing subjects with love and respect. One sunny day, the queen bee embarked on a special journey. She flew with determination towards the majestic palace of Olympus, where Jupiter, the king of the gods, resided. Carrying a vial of her finest honey, she wanted to offer it as a sign of gratitude. As the queen bee approached the palace gates, she felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. But Jupiter welcomed her with a warm smile, delighted by the golden honey she presented. Impressed by her gift, Jupiter granted her a wish, saying, Ask for anything you want, and it will be yours. Let's just pause for a minute. If you were asked that, what would it be? Right now, I could really do with a cup of tea. Is it ran out of milk? 
this morning and I love my tea, but I feel like that would be a waste of a wish. I'd probably wish for something a little bit bigger, but if you could wish for anything, what would you be? What would you wish for? And if you were a bee, what would you want? More honey, a marshmallow? Hmm, a few people got some ideas. Hmm, I wonder what this bee wished for. The queen bee, concerned about her hive's safety, thought carefully. She looked up at Jupiter and asked for, has anyone guessed it? A powerful puppy? Someone's guessed puppy? Not a puppy. Although that might be what you're wanting. She asked for a powerful sting to defend her hive from anyone who tried to steal their honey. Jupiter hesitated, knowing the consequence that her request would bring. But he kept his promise and granted her the wish. So if you know something about honeybees and their sting, you might realise why he was so nervous about granting this wish. Days turned into weeks and the hive thrived. The bees collected nectar diligently, turned it into delicious honey. The queen bee guarded her hive with determination, equipped with her newfound sting. One day, a man approached the hive, tempted by the scent of honey. Determined to protect her home, the queen bee attacked him with her sting. But as Jupiter had warned, the bee's sting remained in the man's flesh, causing the bee's demise. Demise is basically... The hive mourned their brave queen, realising the cost of her wish. They learn that wishes should be carefully considered as they may have unintended consequences. This tale teaches us to think before we wish and to follow and consider the potential outcomes of our desires. The Queen's Bee, bee wished for a powerful sting. While well-intentioned, it led to her own death. It reminds us to choose wisely and be mindful of the consequences of our actions. I wonder if anyone has heard that. And was it a good thing that she got that sting and she sacrificed? She did protect her hive, but at great, great cost. Let's see how well you were listening to that quick story, a bit quicker than usual with these questions. They're speedy questions, so you don't have to type. You can just shout them out. We've got four quick questions and one to think about that I have given you a big clue for already. So here we go. First question, who led the hive? Who was the leader of the hive? It was, who was it? It was the queen bee, well done. Who did they go and visit? I'm gonna sneeze, oh, sorry everybody. So some people think that Aesop got mixed up with which god he wrote in this story, but I kept true to his story. Who did they go and visit? Who did the queen bee go and visit? It was the name of a planet as well. Oh, some people are saying it. Well done. Jupiter, it was king of the gods. Next one, what did the honeybee wish for? Kind of two ways of answering this really. She wished for a stinger, or you could say that she wished to protect her hive, and she thought Stinger would be the right way to go. What happened next? And this is where stories and science come together because this is trying to explain how bees got their sting and why they might die. Some bees die as soon as they've stung. Oh, I've just answered the question, haven't I? The bee died. And this one is just to think about, but I did give you some clues. What are the truths into this story, remember? Even if stories aren't true themselves, they can still teach us something important. Right, we are going to get on with some moving about now. I wondered if you had remembered, if you were here last week, if you remembered the song that we did last week, because it is still really, really helpful this week. Can anyone remember it? It went to a very popular... A very, very popular song. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. But can you remember what it was? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Antennae and proboscis. Head, thorax, abdomen. Because as you're going to learn later, bees have those body parts as well. Even that long 
bolsis, which is that long straw like tongue for sucking up the nectar. So are you ready? We're gonna do it normal speed, we're gonna do it a bit faster, and then we're gonna do it really fast, and then we're gonna watch our nature walk of the week. So <sighs> my costume slowly falling apart. That's okay. <sighs> do our skills. La, 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 la. Brilliant, right? T breath. <sighs> normal speed. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and antennae and proboscis. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Remember to give your tummy a nice big pat. Love a soft tummy, so let's make sure we enjoy that. Right, you ready? A little bit quicker. Head, I think you said shoulders, hang on. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and antennae and proboscis. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Are you ready? Some people are saying it's hard already. Wait till you've done it this time. And after this, we're gonna go straight in to a video because I won't be able to talk. I'll be too out of breath. Are we ready? As fast as you possibly can, but still say in the words. Don't do what some people do where they just open oh, a little bit of proboscis. I know what kids are like, so you've got to say the words, but do it quickly. <sighs> you ready? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and antenna and processes. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Whew. Well, actually, out of the 20,000. When people think of bees, they usually think about honeybees. But actually, out of the 20,000 species of bees, only a few of them make honey. We also usually think of bees being in big hives all together, but that's not the case for all bees. Some bees are social, so they will live in a big hive, and some are solitary, so they will live alone, or they might come in a mini beast hotel like this. So bees are insects that have an exoskeleton. They have three body parts. We've got their head, the thorax and the abdomen. Can you remember that from our butterfly last time? They have six legs. They've got a pair of legs attached to the thorax and two pairs of legs attached to the abdomen. They have antennae at the top. This is where the eyes and the mouth are. They have two sets of wings. One attached up there to the thorax and the other set attached to the abdomen. And female worker bees have a stinger. It has to be a certain temperature for you to see bees around because they need it to warm up for their wings. It's a bit chilly this morning so I don't know if we'll actually see any. Bees live all over the earth in lots of different habitats and they are really, really important. So if you think of the food that you eat in a day, one out of every three mouthfuls depended on bees to have those crops grow. This is because, as we've talked before, bees are needed for pollination. Look at those pollen sacs on those bees' legs. They're needed to help the plants make more, reproduce more plants and more crops for us to eat. In a beehive there are three different types of bees. You've got the queen bee that's kind of the boss, the lead with the pack, although really her job is to stay in the hive and make lots and lots of babies. She's about twice the size of the worker bees and she lives for about two years. Worker bees, like the name suggests, work really hard. They're females and they have a ton of jobs. They look out after the larvae, they're kind of like babysitters. They keep the hive clean, so they're housekeepers. They make honey, so they're cooks. They collect nectar and they collect, they do the pollination. They are really, really, really busy bees. Drones are the male bees and they tend to just stay home in the hive to help the queen make lots and lots of babies. She lays about 2,000 eggs a day, so she's very busy doing that. So let's take a closer look at the metamorphosis that bees go through, that kind of magical change. And those cells that you can see there are really, really important because that is where the queen lays her egg. Just one egg in each cell, but remember she does a lot of those each day. The egg's kind of like a grain of rice, long, thin and white. 
The egg's only in there for a few days and then it hatches into a larva, which is a bit like a tiny white worm or maggot, and it's fed by royal jelly, which the workers have to make. So the larvae are also fed bee bread, which is a mixture of honey and pollen. And after a few days, the top of that cell is sealed with a lid of wax. That's the pupa stage. So just like caterpillars, it's going to wrap itself up in a cocoon and inside that it begins to change. That's where the legs, the eyes and the wings grow. And it takes about three weeks for them to become an adult bee. Then it takes another few weeks for it to kind of get full strength and be able to go out. So first it starts off as a light grey colour and then after it's climbed out of the cell, 21 days later it's going to be ready to go out and explore and get that pollen and nectar and it lives for about six weeks. So there we have the metamorphosis, quite similar to a caterpillar except it's taken place inside those little cells and the parents have a lot to do with it. Now the day is warming up. There are tons of mini beasts around. So I've spotted quite a few, but it's hard to catch them on film because some of them are very, very quick. I'm sure you'll know what a mini beast hotel is. We saw a big one at the beginning. We're making mini, mini beast hotels here out of yogurt pods and we're packing really tightly lots of twigs, especially hollow twigs and some kind of hair that we found on the ground and just trying to get it to be a really cosy home, which it seems to be. The beetles are already enjoying it. And if you look closely here, you'll see another mini beast. Can you spot it? There it is, a little millipede or centipede. So I added a few flowers to mine to make it look pretty and attract the bees and I've used natural materials to hang it up but that means I'm going to have to watch it really carefully because if it drops on the floor I don't want that plastic to be a problem for any animals. Let's finish with a whistle stop tour of the differences between honeybees and bumblebees. So honeybees have a very clear head thorax and abdomen. You can see those three parts and they're skinny. You can see in the sky there. The one in the grass is a bumblebee. It's fluffy and round. So you can tell the difference when you look at them. We've got honeybees. They live above the ground, often domesticated, kind of turned into pets for growing honey. And bumblebees live under the ground. So we've got nests there of finding nooks and crannies. Only one type of honeybee in Europe and it has quite a short tongue so it has to go to flowers that are quite open. Bumblebees have got lots of different types with lots of different lengths of proboscis and it gets really long. Look how it can dive right into that flower. Look at the stinger on the end of this honeybee going in and out. Honeybees can only sting once and then they die. Bumblebees they can sting more than once but they only sting if they're really annoyed. And of course, honeybees make a lot of honey, which we take advantage of as, as humans. But bumblebees only make enough for their own use. Okay, lots of information. I packed a ton of stuff in there. So I'm hoping you'll remember because we are going to have a little bit of a quiz later. Now I took off my stripes because I'm going to need to move. We're going to play. It's We've done this before with other creatures. It's a bit like rock, paper, scissors, but we're going to be using bees. So the different actions that you're going to have, I'll just get some of the instructions up there. So if we say queen bee, this is the action for queen bee with a crown worker bees and want you to buzz really fast because they do a lot of hard work they're very busy and a drone the one that kind of stays home to help make the babies we're just going to go like this because i have this kind of stereotype of being a little bit lazy or drones just kind of going along with it so for drone we're going to be a little bit sleepy because they don't go about as much as workers but i'm sure no offense to them i'm sure they do work hard so basically you need to decide which one of those you are going to do i will turn around i will count to three or maybe i'll make you turn around hmm i'll make you turn around i'll count to three and then choose which one you're going to do if you do queen that beats if you do queen that beats the worker if you do worker that beats the drone see how many points you can get so if you have played this type of thing before so everybody stand up i'll stand up as well maybe i'll turn around as well that's more fun but i can't i'm a bit stuck here let me just move this up a little bit here we go 
There we go. Right. So turn around. I will count to three. Decide what you're going to be. Huh, B, and then turn around. Okay, so I'm going to count backwards. Three, two, one, go. Right, so I was a worker bee. So if you were a drawn, I beat you. But if you were a queen, you beat me. So keep your own score. Right, turn around. I'm going to count down. Three, two, one, jump. I'm a drawn bee, a bit sleepy at home. So if you were a worker bee, you'd beat me. But if you were the queen, because the queens need the drones, I think they're the kind of the king of the nest, queen of the nest, but the drones are really, really important because that's the only way the queen can make babies. Right, we'll do it a couple more times, see who beats me. Three, two, one. I'm a worker bee again. Keep your own score. Right, turn around. Three, two, one. Queen B, did I beat anybody, I wonder? All oh, a few people are tying each time with me. Last one. Three, two, one, and go. Work with me again, my favourite. I wonder if I beat anyone. I'm going to sit down and move my camera down. I like that game because it's fun, but it also reminds you of those three different types of bees in a hive. Now we're going to have a quiz Whew. while I catch my breath back. Oh dear, I need to do some kind of workout before I start Pathfinders. Let's take that off here. We'll have a little bit of a quiz. And you might just want to sit down and shout out the answers for this. If you want to write down on your journal, you can. If you want to type it in, you can. So. I need to share my screen to get this up. Here we go. Right, can everybody see that? Make it nice and big. So first question, what do bees need to make honey? Is it sugar, nectar or water? A, B, C, sugar, nectar or water? Give you a little bit of time. Maybe I should play some music or something. Does it have music on? Yes, it does. Here we go. Right, it is nectar. Next one. How many wings does a honeybee have? Is it two, four, or six? How many wings does a honeybee have? It is four because they've got kind of two sets of two, haven't they? They're called the four wings and the hind wings. Where do honeybees keep their nectar while they're flying back to the hive? I didn't tell you this, but see if you can work it out. Do they keep it in their mouth, in their stomach, or in their second stomach? What do you think? It is in their second stomach. Next one. What shapes will you find inside a beehive? Pentagons, hexagons, or septagon, so five-sided, six-sided, or seven-sided. It is hexagons. Those cells, remember, they're called. Second to last, what is a newly hatched baby bee called? Is it a beelet, a larva, or a waspling? I like the sound of a beelet. But it is, it's that middle one again. Larva. Next one. On average, how long do worker bees live for? Three to four days, five to six weeks, or seven to eight months? Last question. It is the middle one again, five to six weeks. Well done if you got those right. If you didn't, that's okay because it's a way of learning. So, I had lots of people send me amazing things that we're going to look at now, and then I will show you what I made. Still out of breath, honestly. I need to get some more exercise in. So let's see the amazing things that you have made. So Gracie is actually, a couple of weeks ago, raised her own butterflies, which I know a lot of you have done where you've got the caterpillars and then you've watched them turn into their chrysalis or the cocoons, and then you let them go from that kind of big net. So her butterflies, she sent me a video, they just stayed in that net. They were obviously very well looked after and very cozy. 
All right. Oh, yeah, a few people saying that they did that as well. Eva, Eva made some bee wings. I mean, butterfly wings. Aren't they great? So she made them with her handprints, and then there she is flying around the meadow. Brilliant. And here we've got another lovely butterfly as well. I love the antennae as well. Evie has got, oh, I think this was from another week, wasn't it? So it might be in here twice, but she's got her lovely picture there. It's because I really like those pine cone hedgehogs. I think that's why I accidentally stayed in. Um, Aaron or Aaron, Aaron has got his wand there that he made. And then we've got a beautiful caterpillar from an egg cup. You can make bees from um, egg cups as well. You just need those three sections, head, thorax, abdomen, and you can do that. But that is beautiful. Jack has got his belt-in goddess that he sewed, and this is just beautiful. Love it. I think you could, could sell these and, oh, lovely. Right, Miriam and Esme visited a butterfly house, so they saw all the parts of the life cycle of the butterfly. So there are the chrysalises hanging down. I would love to see one in real life. I kind of always look around in the bushes and dark places to see if they're there, but I haven't seen them before. Juliana has got these lovely um, beaded and Lego butterflies, really clever. Isla has got her symmetrical nature butterfly there and she's got her pond picture as well in. I love the frog spawn. I wonder how you did that. I think that kind of whatever you stamped it with would make a good beehive stamp as well. Bella has got her lovely butterfly in her Minecraft world. A lot of you doing things digitally on, online, so that's a brilliant idea. All right. Riley has got this lovely, so he made it a, a, sorry, she made a butterfly garden, and, but she made it as the life cycle of a butterfly, which I thought was a really clever idea. Zoe has got her Minecraft greenhouse that was to attract lots of pollinators, beautiful. Jaden, busy as always. So you can see, oh, he's already done a beehive there in the background. He's got his caterpillar, he's got his butterfly. Brilliant, really, really busy. Matthew has got another cat egg cub caterpillar there. Love it so much. Jasmine. Jasmine, I loved this. I was telling my boss about it today because I just thought it was brilliant. So first of all, she practiced all different ways and techniques of painting on a fabric. And then they decided to go with a tie dye butterfly cape. Look at it. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, I was telling everyone about that today because I just thought it was spectacular. If you wear it all, I would love to see a picture of that too. A lot of people in the comments are liking that as well. Milo and Lincoln, so their parent was about to mow the lawn and before they did, they got all the things that they needed to make their symmetrical um, and nature themed butterfly. Laura, I love the Beltane goddesses. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could get them all in one place and kind of have a wall of these goddesses because they look fantastic. And Lily's got some beautiful, peaceful, calm blue butterflies. I love the way you made them pop out as well. We've got loads to this. I'm having to go through them quite quickly. Joe's got his nature butterfly that he was on holiday and he collected his things for it. I love the way you've got the antennae coming out with blades of grass and you've even made it symmetrical as well. Wonderful. Thomas has got his life cycle here. I love it. It's so organized as well. So you've got the eggs there. You've got the caterpillar at the top with the legs. You've got the chrysalis and then you've got the butterfly. Beautiful dandelion butterfly as well. Excellent. Zoe, another person who's been very, very busy. Look at that belt it got us at the bottom. I love it. She's so cheerful. And we've got the handprint belt and fireworks. We've got all sorts of amazing things. Well done, Zoe. Alexis went on Sims. I don't know if any of you play Sims, but I've got a video to show her butterfly world later. I'll show you more of that later. Freya and Darcy have been raising butterflies as well and then made these lovely butterflies. I love, love the shapes of the wings, they're really interesting. And we've got some videos to show. So the first one is from Alexis. So let me get that up. Where is it? So this is her butterfly world.
So some amazing things that you can create online. I didn't even know you could do that in Sims. So that is a great idea from her. And then here we have something from Ron and Violet. Imagine this, 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 this is how it works. Brilliant. I love seeing all your different videos that you send in. I love the emails that you send and tell me what you're up to. Definitely keep doing that. Let's see what you can do this week then. So you can make a junk model in. Oh, hang on. I haven't shown you, have I? I knew I was missing out on something. So I mentioned it there, you can make a junk model insect. Do you wanna see what I've done this week? Let's see. It's a bit shy because it's not quite what I planned. And it's got a little bit stuck here, but I made a junk model B. There we go, it's gonna fly across now with a stinger on the end. I'm going to show you how I did that because it's kind of fallen apart a bit from having a bit of an adventure. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Then I'll talk about what you could do this week. So have a look at this. So I had no idea how I was going to make this project this week. I knew what I wanted, a model of a bee, but I didn't quite know how to do it. But that's a good thing because it meant that I got to experiment and try some different things out. So first of all, I needed to figure out how to add a head to my bottle. So I put slits in and managed to fit it around. I just added tape on to secure it. I use masking tape because that's quite easy to take off and move things around if I needed to. It's also good for recycling and taking things apart. I've kept these eyes for ages because I thought they would make a perfect compound eye and I was right, they look really good. The wings, I wasn't too certain about. So I used milk bottles and one of those cartons, you know, that the grapes come in and cut out shapes. I wish I'd made them a little bit bigger and they were quite tricky to make secure. So later on I went back and added a bit more security with some glue but yeah this is just a prototype so I'm just having a go next time I know to improve it by making the wings a little bit bigger Then I decided to add some masking tape for the stripes I was hoping that I could just kind of make this I don't want to say naked but just to use the items that I had and not add any decoration but as I was going along, I think it definitely needed something brighter. But anyway, then I got on to the legs. I just used toilet rolls. And again, I like this method, but I think I would need something more secure or maybe to lay up the toilet rolls. And you know how insect legs are kind of segmented? I wanted to make that by folding them. So that's what I did. Then it's my new favourite glue, flour and water, and I had all those scraps from my Beltane Goddess to turn into my bee and decorate it. So I didn't go for perfect, I wanted to have a little bit of texture to it. So you can see that I've added some black stripes and now I'm adding on some invisible um, string that I got from the scrap store one time. And it doesn't look exactly how I wanted to, but it looks good enough for my prototype. So we added a stick to it because one of my kids had a great idea of turning it into a puppet. So I had to make sure all the string was the kind of same length so that I could move it around. And then we took it for a fly around. So it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, but I think it still turned out really good. on mute sorry about that you need to have a go at making if you want to a junk model b you don't have to use a bottle you can use anything you want but the aim is to kind of start with a random collection of junk and then figure out how you're going to make it don't start with your idea and then go out and buy stuff for it the point of scrap tactic challenges is to try and test our mind a little bit so this is what you could do, make a junk model insect, make a mini beast hotel, you could make a virtual beehive or maybe even like a bee city where the bees are some type of humanoid, that would be really interesting. You could also sow some wildflower seeds as well. So lots of things that you can do this week and I can't wait to see it. Remember, your grown up can email it or put it on our Facebook group as well. Can't wait to check those out next week. But anyway, I'm gonna buzz off now because 
well, I've got some pollen to collect. It has been absolutely amazing hanging out with you as always. I'm going to leave you with our blessing and I hope you have a brilliant week. May the paths you explore be full of wonder and the skies you play under be peaceful. May the treasures you find be plentiful and the mysteries you unfold be many.